I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. And I tell you what, we just got some good stuff for you this week. Matter of fact, we have more than usual, uh, which means it might be an extended show today. Uh, the nice thing is, is that uh, I don't know, I don't know what criteria they use, but YouTube has basically told us that we can now upload no limit. Isn't that cool? Ha! So if you watch us on the old YouTube, then you'll be, you'll have a lot of stuff. I don't like to do really long shows anyway because you'll, you'll nod off. And nodding off is no good. So, we've got to keep you entertained. Which is why sometimes it gets a little silly. But we like the silliness. Yes. All right, let's go to the blog. The blog, of course, is drbill.cc. CC stands for Computer Curmudgeon. Now, the term computer curmudgeon, let me give you a little background here, goes back many, many years ago, back to the mid-90s, when I worked for a web company, and they said, ooh, I know, Dr. Bill, why don't you do a, uh, like a, uh, what you call it, a, a column on our website. This is back when websites, you know, people were going, what's a website? And it's, we're talking way back. They said, why don't you do a column? And, and I know you could call yourself the computer curmudgeon. And I thought, a computer curmudgeon? Yes. Well, the gray hair has helped fill that that bill, you know, out a little bit where I guess I am now curmudgeonly. Curmudgeonly? Let's not try to pronounce that word. I'm not sure it is a word. That'll make it easier <laughs> to not pronounce it if it's not a word. Anyway, um, let's look at the old blog, shall we? <laughs> By the way, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon and all the other podcasts on the Tech Podcast Network. There's just so many good podcasts out there. I tell you what, there's just so many that we couldn't list them all. But I, I want to start talking about at least one a week. And so, uh, you know, we've mentioned, we mentioned Todd Cochran last time, who has Geek News Central. We mentioned, um, let's see... We mentioned Totally Cool Tech. We've mentioned Jeffrey Powers with Geekazine. There's just so many podcasts for you to check out. And I encourage you to check them all out. Uh, there's some things happening with Tech Podcast Network, not the least of which, if you stay tuned this week, you will hear some announcements about their PodPress plugin for WordPress. That's kind of hard to say if you say it too fast. That's why I was trying to slow down and be a little more careful about how I say it. Anyway, version 2 is coming out. It's going to have all kinds of new cool features, of which I can't tell you because I know some of the secret features, but they're secret, so I'm not going to say them. Or Todd would bark me in the head. Don't want that. Although, how he could do it from Hawaii, I'm not sure. But I wouldn't put it past him. Anyway, so let's go to the blog. I've just digressed completely. First of all, let me talk about the fact that The Legend of Zelda turned 25. Now, I don't play a lot of video games. I'm just not a gamer type dude. But my son, of course, Benjamin, is the Game Master. And being the Game Master, he plays a lot of games, as you might imagine. So it just struck me when I read the article about The Legend of Zelda turning 25, that The Legend of Zelda is older than he is. He's 18. Legend of Zelda is 25. Whoa. So I was just very impressed that the game that he talks about a good bit, it's not his current super favorite, but he has played it many times in the past, is older than he is. It strikes me as odd. 
Whoa! And that, of course, is the drum roll that tells us it's time for another Geek Software of the Week. Geek Software of the Week this week is Super 1010, which I mentioned on the last netcast. And uh, <laughs> it turns out, <laughs> my fault, it's my bad. Uh, I was having problems with the resolution, and I gave you an example of the very tiny little resolution of the pictures through the recording I did of Super 1010. Turns out that's just a local setting. Duh. You know, I should have figured that out. But at any rate, on their website, they have a hint and tip thing. And I was able to use that and another piece of software, which I mentioned here in this little article that I wrote on the Geek Software of the Week, called the Force Skype HQ HD Webcam Video Doohickey. <laughs> There's a link there, and there'll be a link in the show notes where you can download it. And it basically just brings up a screen, allows you to make a few quick adjustments. It writes it to the config.xml file for Skype, and that will enhance your video quality within Skype, whether you're recording it or not. But at any rate, then when you record it using Super 1010, then you have higher quality video. So I'm still, I'm still tweaking. I'm still kind of playing with it, but I'm learning that it was my bad that the reason that it didn't record so well. So soon... Be looking for interviews with other strange and geeky people right here on drbill.tv. Yes. By the way, drbill.tv is kind of the shorthand version for Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. The Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is the show. Dr. Bill.tv is kind of the, the broad term and the website where you can watch the videos, among all the other places, YouTube and so forth and so on. So, lots of things. Okay, anyway, I'm digressing. The Motorola Zoom tablet goes on sale Thursday. Now, when I wrote this, of course, Thursday was coming up. Now it is just past. Yes, as I record this. So, it is now out. And I've been watching videos and reviews of the Zoom tablet. And all I can say is, Ken has... <laughs> I want one so bad. But anyway, looks really cool. I mean, dual processor, dual core processor. Well, it's a dual core processor. But anyway, and it uses the latest Android operating system, Honeycomb, and it's just awesome. Does many very cool things. So check that out. Check out the reviews. Matter of fact, if you go to uh, YouTube and type in Zoom, that's with an X, X-O-O-M, Motorola Zoom, and you'll find lots of review videos. And I've been watching them and drooling. <clears throat> anyway, next item, Amazon Live Streaming Video is now available. This is like Netflix, except it's not Netflix. Yes, and of course, it doesn't have, you know, as many selections as Netflix. But it's pretty cool. So if you have Amazon Prime, you've already been getting their shipping for free, two-day shipping, then you qualify to get the downloads. And I tried their trial, not, not the trial of Amazon Prime, but the trial of their uh, live streaming. And I watched mere moments. You can only watch like a few minutes. But I watched a few minutes of Sherlock Holmes in the 22nd Century which is a cartoon that I used to like to watch a lot. It's very odd. But anyway, I watched that, and it was fun. So check it out. Next item, I've got a geek project. Now, occasionally I do a little geek project just to kind of play with new technologies, and this is one that I played with. And what it is is experimenting with HTML5 and WebM video format. Now, let me... Uh, let me do a little splain in here. Most of the video that you see on the web is Flash video. Now, Flash is a proprietary technology developed by Adobe. Okay? And so, you have to have an Adobe Flash plugin to play the videos that people produce in Flash format. 
Okay, so far? Now, most people have downloaded that Flash plugin in order to watch videos like YouTube and like other things online. So the vast majority of people out there do have the Flash plugin installed. Okay? Matter of fact, if you're watching this video, chances are very good that you're probably watching it as a Flash video through a Flash player that you have installed locally. Okay? Now, with that being said, that of course is proprietary. Now, I am all about open source, and I like open source stuff. So there is, uh, actually there are several video formats that are public domain, open source, whatever you want to call it. The primary one that comes to mind, of course, is Og Theora. Og Theora is a video format. It's been out, wow, for a long time. And I've played with it a little bit in the past. But recently, Google has released WebM, which is another video codec, into the open source arena. Okay? So it's out there and it's available. Now, not only that, but they have pushed for it to be uh, fully readable, if you want to call it that, through HTML in the video tag. See, HTML5, which is what I'm talking about, HTML5, has a video tag that basically all you do is reference the file and if your browser supports HTML5, and if it supports the codec, and this is what I found out as I was experimenting with this with the Geek Project, then it will work fine. Okay? Now, here's what I did. I created some HTML5 code, which you can see in the article here. Just basically shows doc type HTML. There's an HTML tag, then there's a body tag then a center tag because I want the video centered and then you use the tag that comes in HTML5 which is the video tag you put controls that will show the controls on the bottom of the screen when you hover over the, the uh, video then the width which I chose 640 pixels the height 420 pixels that will give you a nice 16 by 9 ratio Okay. then the source is and then if you'll notice in the code the source file is the last netcast, but in WebM format. Cool, huh? So that's their new open format. Then you have a line that will show just in case their browser doesn't support HTML5 and the video tag and so forth. It will show this browser does not support the video tag. So, you know, that would be like people that are using IE, Internet Explorer. Ain't gonna work, dude. Okay, now I use Chrome. That's my current favorite. Firefox also supports HTML5, but here's the kicker. It's also got to support the video codec. So just because Firefox supports HTML5, it doesn't currently support WebM. Google does, so Chrome does. See? So Chrome worked. Well, since I use Chrome all the time, I'm like, dude, this works great. So I put it out there. I have a little link you can click on and see WebM and HTML5 at work. Well, I immediately got an email back and a comment. Uh, well, you know, it generated, when they created a comment, it generated an email that came to me. Okay, let's get real technical. Anyway, point is, I got the information that it wasn't working in Firefox. And I was like, why not? <laughs> because I knew that Firefox supports HTML5. So I went out and looked, and sure enough, the guy was right. You know, it was just a little X. I'm like, oh, well, dude. So then I come to find out Firefox does not yet support WebM. So there you go. However, Firefox 4 will support WebM. Opera supports WebM. And Chrome supports WebM. So there you go. Now, will IE 9... I know IE9 supports HTML5, but will it support WebM? I don't know. But hopefully it will because a couple of things I noticed. I noticed that the high quality video, 720p quality video, was smaller in size in WebM format by a little bit. Actually, maybe more than a little bit. It's like 150 meg. And I think the uh, 
uh, standard flash was like 220 meg. So that's significant. It's a significant size savings, which means it will stream faster. And it also means it takes up less space on the web host, which is kind of nice. So pretty cool. Anyway, thought I would share that with you. I'm constantly playing with technology and tweaking things and finding things out that I will pass along to you. Hopefully you're not going... <laughs> that would be bad. Okay, next item. Global spam levels suddenly drop. Now this is good news. I'm all for global spam levels dropping. Why are they dropping? We don't know. It's a little confusing. Because spam levels have just been going up and up and up. That's my... That's my, uh, you know, what do you call it, graph? I just make these things up as I go along. Anyway, they've been going up and up, and now suddenly a precipitous drop. Precipitous, another good word. I'm trying to enhance your vocabulary. Okay, next item. A Zoom by any other name would smell as sweet. Yes. Turns out that Zoom Corp, which is apparently some kind of money company, company that does, you know, like sends money places as a service, whatever, I don't know. Anyway, they have been on the web since 2003, and apparently they are taking some umbrage at Motorola for using the word Zoom with an X, X-O-O-M, because that's the name of their company. And they're a little ticked off about it. They're like, dude, come on, it's our name, man. Now, here's the thing about that. Zoom, first of all, is not a real word. X-O-O-M. Um, but not only that, they're like a financial services company. They don't sell doohickeys that are like tablets. So, you know, I guess you could ask the question, if you were selling a doohickey, could you call your doohickey Exxon? Because Exxon sells gas, but they don't sell doohickeys. So could you have an Exxon doohickey? I don't know. So that's going to be fought out in the courts. We'll see how that all goes. It may be the Zoom will have to rename themselves. Which would probably be very awkward if you've already sold one that has Zoom written on it. You know, maybe they'll become collector's items. Aha, that would be cool. Anyway. I don't know. Next item. VMware View 4.6 is out. Just came out. As well as a ThinApp update. Now this is VMware ThinApp VMware View. View is their virtual desktop solution. And ThinApp is their virtual application platform solution. Both of which rock. I'm telling you. They're very, 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 very cool. And I play with them a good bit. Matter of fact, we've just put one um, terminal, a wise terminal, thin client, actually zero client. There's you know basically nothing there except a an EEPROM with the PCOIP protocol built into it that connects to the VMware View server which then cranks up the session on the VMware host that has a VMware guest that comes up that then connects across the network. And as far as the user is concerned, they're just using a PC. They don't care. So all that cool technology is going on in the background so they can just, like, do their normal jobs. <laughs> Isn't that neat? Anyway, so I've been playing with that and getting it all set, and we put our first terminal out in the actual real world of High Point Regional, and it's over there working now. Nurses are, like, doing their thing on that terminal. How cool is that? Isn't that neat? Anyway, so that's actually in production. Well, it's in test. I mean, they're testing it real world, so it's one of those gray areas. Anyway, uh, thin app I've also worked with and kind of kind of experimented with. Haven't put it out in production at all, but it is just so awesome. So anyway, I just wanted to let you know that they have announced new releases. Now, some of the features include on the view front 
It will now do enterprise class SSL VPN connectivity to view with their view security server, which is very neat. That means you can provide the view sessions to the outside world, to the WAN, wide area network, as opposed to internally in your LAN, local area network. Yes. So, neat stuff. So anyway, there you go. Now, there's all kinds of other fun things that I want to get into, but I don't have them ready yet. I'm still just tweaking and getting them just right. So I'll be releasing that soon, as well as playing with the video interview process where we'll have one screen and another screen, and we'll be able to talk to each other. A hidden technology grand. So I'm working on all that. So when I'm not doing the show, I'm off doing geeky things. And I trust you are as well. So, ah, uh, hmm. Did I have anything else? Have I covered everything? I think I have. If I haven't, then I'll save it for next time. So until next time, remember that the doctor is out of here.